Hey guys, welcome back. It's Joey again. You're watching Vegas D Tech, and today, guys, I've got another tech review. You know, for a while now, I've been in the market looking for a couple of e bikes in which I could incorporate into my channel for my Lake Mead videos, but I have absolutely no experience when it comes down to e bikes. I don't know what constitutes a decent bike, what makes a good bike good, or a better bike better. What are the differences? And these bikes, guys, range between $500 to well over $3,000. Now, with that being my dilemma, you really don't have any choices but to just jump right in and invest the money. And if you don't know what you're buying, you could be wasting a whole bunch of money. So I've done a little bit of research, done some uh, Googling and some YouTubing, and a company kept coming up that was really popular, very hot, and the company's name was Cyrusher. I contacted the marketing team of Cyrusher and I asked them, hey, would you be interested in possibly letting me review one of your bikes? Because I really like your product line. And after about a week of talking with these individuals, I got this package delivered from FedEx to my front door. Looked just like this. I opened up the box and this is what was in it. And guys, what you're looking at right here is the Cyrusher Komoda. Now folks, I don't have any knowledge at all when it comes down to an e-bike, okay? If you want to talk to me about, you know, scooters, maxi scooters, I have a technical background when it comes down to these type of individuals, but when it comes down to these e-bikes, I have no clue what I'm looking at. But this guy right here is the gorgeous bike that Cyrusher sent to me. It is the Cyrusher Komoda. This is my very first e-bike. I'm going to start off by showing you how this bike arrived what came out of the box, what it took to actually build it in the amount of time. Man, this thing is boxed really, really nice. Tires come inflated. It's got a tool kit sitting over here. <laughs> Looks like a uh, mud flap for the front. Look at that beefy tire, man. All right, so this thing comes with an Allen wrench kit, pedals, a bike pump, man. Look at that, tire pump. Another, looks like a 15, 15, 16 millimeter, 15 millimeter wrench. And the power pack to actually charge the, uh, to charge the battery. Okay. Now some people say that the bike didn't come with a manual, but I'm seeing right here, it does come with a manual. Looks like instructions to me. Keys. <laughs> Since when's the last time you've seen keys with a bicycle?
There it is, guys. It took me about 30 minutes to put together. For you guys, it probably just took a couple of minutes to watch me put together. I guess the hardest part of it all was just trying to figure out the handlebar, you know, spinning it around and coordinating the uh, instrument cluster. And uh, the rest of it was simple. All the back stuff was already assembled. I tell you what, man, these guys here use the best zip ties in the world. These are police rated zip ties, man. Quality zip ties. Guys, I am impressed with this bike, man. This is a heavy duty bike, just a solid built bike. So guys, I'm gonna do a quality, uh, I'm gonna do a quality sweep over all of the nuts and bolts, make sure everything is on tight, lubricated properly. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, take it out there and put it to its paces. I'm gonna stick it on a charger right now, get it up to speed. Next time you see me, we'll be out here riding on it. Alrighty guys, so now that you've seen how the bike was put together, let's actually go over this thing and take a look at some of the features that it has. Alright guys, when I first take a look at a bike, overall you have to take a look at it and it is beautiful. But beyond that, what is one of the first things that catches my eye? How comfortable is the ride going to be? No matter how beautiful a bike is, if it's not comfortable, I'm not going to be on it for very long. This Cyrusha Komoda comes with this really nice added seat. It feels like it's gel and you could really feel the, the giveness of it when you ride. You know, you're not having that hard plastic that's just bouncing up against your butt bone, just making the ride all uncomfortable. I'm very happy that they provided us with this seat right here. There are a couple of different seats that you can get, but for me, the construction of this seat right here, I like it. Number one is the seat. Number two, guys, is when you take a look at this bike, one of the things that, you know, always got me when I was a kid was that it looks like a girl's bike because of this step through design. Because you know, when, when guys had a bike, the guys always had a bar that came through like this and the girls had this little step through like this, right? But after a while of looking at this thing, I realized that a lot of the scooters that I have are built the same way, it's the step in. And it's really nice because you could just step right through it to get on the bike, as opposed to having to always whip your leg over the entire situation. It gets kind of tiring. Here you could just crawl right in. So this right here, guys, it builds on me and it made sense and I'm starting to grow on me. One of the most beautiful things on this bike that really makes it attractive is these big four inch wide wheels. Just take a look at that, guys. These knobby tires here, these knobby tires are great for commuting through the city. And also, if you want to get off the tarmac and you want to get out here, that's exactly what the uh, bike is designed for. It's going to have a duality role to where you can ride it on the city streets as a commuter. Or if you need to take a cut through the desert, a cut through the park to get home, a little trail or something like that, this is going to be no problem for this bike. The rotors on these bikes here, the braking system, are 180 millimeter rotors. And it comes with hydraulic calipers which is really strange because all the bikes that i've ever had have always had cable style and they claim that these are hydraulic now with all the motorcycles and scooters that i have hydraulics always had like a reservoir right here that contained fluid i don't see any of that i don't know if this is like a new technology but they claim that this is a hydraulic system i don't know if the hydraulic fluid is contained within the caliper itself somehow but they're claiming that this is a hydraulic line and uh it's a hydraulic caliper now the next thing about this is going to be the suspension if you take a look at the suspension guys you have a rear suspension right here the rear suspension on this bike is going to be a spring design i read on here somewhere you know if you read the little letterings on there it makes mention that the uh, spring needs to be uh pressed up against the nut this and that it has nothing to do with us i guess it's more for the people that assembled it but uh normally the uh, air adjusted ones have some sort of a valve right here that you can adjust and add air and adjust it but this doesn't have that it's just a spring design but i think it does just fine the front however is fully adjustable on the front here guys it looks like a motorcycle design it's got a triple tree kind of design. On motorcycles, they call this thing right here a triple tree. And this right here has forks that can be adjusted. You can actually undo these nuts right here, in here, and you could push the bike down or up. If you want to get the bike to come down on the front or raise it up, you can adjust these here. Now, one of the most beautiful thing on this bike is that every single thing on this bike can be adjusted with Allen keys. And the company provides a full set of metric Allen keys. 
So anything on the spike that needs to be adjusted can be done with that toolkit. You just throw it in the back of your bag and bring it along with you and you can dial this bike into exactly how you want it to feel comfortable and make it customized to how you want to ride. So getting back to the front shocks here, guys, you're gonna have two uh, adjustments. You're gonna have compression and you're gonna have preload. So with a, with a compression or preload, you're gonna be able to adjust how much travel it gives you and how hard it rebounds just by these right here. So the front suspension is fully adjustable. The back, it's kind of set, but I think that the company has it set just right. I've never had an issue with it. The rebound and flex feels perfect. Now, when we get down to the actual transmission, the transmission is made by Shimano. And this is gonna be a seven gear cassette and it's also got a Shimano derailleur. And it's powered by this unit right here, which is really nice. As you're, as you're riding your bike, if you are, if you're pedaling like a hamster and, you, and you're going way, way, way too fast and you need to stop pedaling so fast, you can change the cadence of your speed by just clicking this button. It'll jump it to the next gear and you should start to calm down with your pedaling. Now, if you're pedaling, your speed is building and you're starting to gain too much pedaling, you do it again. You hit it one more time, it jumps into the next gear and you should start calming down with your pedaling again to where you're not just like a mad hamster going nuts. Now, if you start to come to a stop and you're in too high of a gear, then you just start to regulate it by pushing back with your thumb into gear number three, gear number two, gear number one. And once again, as you start to build up speed, you just hit this thing right here and it will automatically change your gears for you. This alone, with the power assist module right here, is all you'll ever need to actually get through the majority of your commuting through the city. Uh, I only use this thing in eco mode, and I tell you, the bike itself feels like that's all you ever need, and we haven't even begun to tap into the true power of the bike. And if we take a look at how the power is applied to the ground, you have a 48 volt, 750 watt, Psy Rusher hub motor that applies all the power to the ground. The actual battery pack is contained inside the stem right here. Now what's really cool about this is that you can charge it right here through this little teeny hole that they have in the frame and your charger will fit right in here and you can charge it. However, if you are going to work and you, do, you can't bring the bike inside, all you've got to do is put your key inside here and you can eject the battery and pull the entire unit out bring this inside and charge it inside the office, inside your store, what have you. And uh, by the time you get off work, you can just push this button and the color right here will change colors. Uh, the green will indicate that it's fully charged and then you just unplug it, throw your battery pack uh, into your backpack and then put this thing right back inside here. And there you have it. One thing that makes this thing really nice is you look at this bike and it looks like a really big bike, right? I have this configured for me and I'm six feet tall. Now, Maria, my girlfriend, she's five foot six. And I thought that, you know, she would complain that the bike is too big for her. But really, all I had to do for her was to lower this thing down. And instantly she was able to ride it with no problems at all. Didn't even need to adjust the handlebars. However, the handlebars can also be adjusted via this right here the neck all you have to do on the neck right here guys is allen screw here and these two here and you swivel this thing back this way so the whole handlebar can swivel this way and this this uh, handlebar neck can articulate forward and up for taller riders and then if you spin it around it can articulate up and back for a smaller rider so you can just see here that the handlebars can come back this way for, tall, for taller riders, it can articulate front-wise and it can accommodate large riders or short riders. Another thing that it has nice on here is got folding pegs. So you would just push it in and fold it up. Now, another thing, guys, that I really, really like is going to be this bike rack. A lot of the uh, channels here, they don't mention just how useful this bike rack is here, guys. There's so many possibilities that you can have with this bike rack. There's so many bags you could put onto it. You have the saddle bags that can fall down here on the side. That's why you've got these rails right here that are really nice because with these uh, with these rails right here, it keeps the bags out of the gearing on both sides. Or if you don't want the side bag, you just got these, these bags that look like a camel hump. There's a couple of bags that Cyrusher actually makes, but they look like padded 
bags that have zipper pouches. And I tell you, once you put a padded bike bag on the back of this, this becomes an all-purpose commuter that can be used for everyday usage and it's actually practical. It's not just something that you would just ride around for exercise and put away. This becomes a full-fledged commuter bike that can be used every day as your lone source of transportation if that's all you have. If we come and take a look at these handlebar controls, these are really ingenious as well. One of the nice things I like about it are these actual handles that we have right here. They're stitched, and the way that it's designed right here, guys, is that it's got this little kind of a hump paddle that comes out that you could rest your palm on to where you don't get fatigued in your hands. You could adjust how they actually rotate here, and you could adjust the articulation just simply by taking this little screw off on the side right here. Both sides of them, you have two of them. You just take this uh, Allen nut here, Allen nut, and when you loosen them, you could move them up or down just to get the right angle on both sides, however you're fancy. Let's go ahead and turn this thing on. All right, so on here you have a horn. It's not like the loudest horn in the world, but trust me, when you're going down like quiet paths and streets, if there's people in the path, they're gonna hear that. You can come up behind somebody and, and not shock them or scare them with some obnoxious horn. And I think that's how they wanted it. They didn't want you to scare people as you're coming down the street on sidewalks. It's not so obnoxious. The next thing you have here is the uh, light button. The light button, is when you hit this thing, it's going to turn the headlight on, which is a little LED light, okay? And it's also going to turn on your rear brake light, okay? So you're going to have the brake light. Now, what's really nice is that when you actually hold your brake and you, and you grab it, either the, the, the front or rear, when you hit it, this little center piece here also blinks. Okay, so you're going to have like the, the, the running light and you're going to actually have a brake light, which is really nice. It looks like they have turn signals in here, you know, that could have been used for some other bike or maybe an upgrade later on. Getting back over here to the uh, controls, you're going to have your up down arrows here to adjust as we come over to the control panel. You can see how just how nice this thing is laid out and it's a color control panel. You can adjust your power assist modes by just hitting up and down. Okay, so if you hit up and down, you have power assist too. I know, you know what? I've ridden around in just the eco mode. I call it the 401k type of a system here. So whatever effort it is that you put into the pedal, the motor provides you the same amount of effort. Okay, so you can change this thing. I haven't really messed around with the other modes. Eco mode is basically the lowest setting. Then you're going to have low. Then you're going to have normal click it again you'll have high and you click it one more time and you have this power mode now i tell you man this is up right here you may only need this if you're climbing a really a really uh steep hill i've never had to use any of this myself personally but i keep it in eco mode guys and let me tell you man the nice thing about this is whatever your endurance is coming out of the box let's just say that let's just say that all you can do is one mile on a bicycle, right? Once, right out of the box, the second you, you turn this bike on and you put it in eco mode, I guarantee you, you can go three times the distance on whatever endurance you have. So if you're only able to initially, under normal power, ride a bike for, let's just say, one mile, you're gonna immediately be able to get three miles and not feel winded because of the power assist. And that's in the eco mode right out of the box. The braking system is delightful, front and rears. And like I said, the brakes here, normally you would see these things operating on a cable and the cables have these calipers that push up against the uh, rim. That's the old style that's like this. This doesn't have that. This style here uses the caliper, just like in motorcycles. And it's got twin brake pads that presses up against this rotor. And guys, absolutely delightful to have these things here. You got the front and back. And uh, I believe you can adjust the tension on them with this right here. I'm not sure if the adjustments right here are with the pads start to wear down. You can twist these things right here and make up for it until you have to replace the pads. But I believe both of these have that type of adjustment front and back just for, for the pads. And another thing I really like is the uh, kickstand. I like the way Cyrusher placed it. Instead of putting it up here with that old uh, pogo style where it will just come down and be really long and clack along the bottom. They placed it right along the back right here and it's up and out of the way. It has a short little throw here. I like the style with the little plastic foot peg. Some of the concerns that I do have about this bike here is gonna be the clearance, right? I was always concerned about this down here, 
the clearance on this thing here is, I believe, about 10, 10 and a half from the ground. But when we take a look at the clearance from the crank, you're looking at eight inches right here, guys. All right. And then the other thing, too, is that when you actually have this pedal down right here, the actual clearance of the pedal from the ground is more like about six. OK, so you got to be careful. I see guys bunny hopping up onto the curbs and stuff like that. But depending on your weight and how much you have this uh, suspension compressed, as you're coming up onto the curbs like that, I'm always concerned that this is going to bottom out or the crank is going to bottom out. So that's just one of the things here with the way the bike is designed and the frame riding low like that. When I come up near a curb, I don't want to scrape the bottom right here because this, uh, this area right here in this frame harbors all of the electronics. The battery and the speed controller are up inside here. I don't want to do any damage to the frame and I definitely don't want to crash and uh, fall down because the pedal bottoms out against the curb. So uh, kind of keep kind of keep your pedals like in this position here as you're going up on top of the curb. I've seen some guys really go off doing some like jumps and crazy off-road things. You know, me personally, I would never do that with this bike. I don't think that's what it was designed to do. I think this bike was designed as more of a commuter. What I'm seeing is that when they do all these jumps and so forth, this chain tends to bang around like this, you know? And I always wonder, like, you know, the way these guys are doing jumps and so forth, that the, the, the chain's going to jump out of the derailleur or come out of the sprocket, you know? So you could just see doing a bunch of jumps, what that can do. So I wouldn't be riding the bike that badly. However, I have seen the channels do it, and the bike performs just well, and it proves the durability of the bike. But for me, I would just ride it normally, you know, through parks, through streets, through uh, trails and so forth like that, and not put the bike through a whole bunch of abuse. All right, guys, let's go ahead and crank this bike up. We're going to go all the way up to full power. And we're going to see just how much, just how fast we can get this bike going. Twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine. 30 miles an hour, 31, 31.5. And that's with pedal assistance, 31.5. And that was on level power setting five with power assist to the pedals. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and do another run. This time we're, got, we're just going to go full throttle, no pedal, all throttle, okay? Here we go. 15, 6, 17, 19, 20, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 31 31.2, and then it stops. So it must have some type of a speed limiter on it because it automatically times out on both runs at 31.2. And that was with just full power, no pedaling, just the power only from the throttle. Alrighty guys, well that was my little review on the Cy Rusher Komoda. If you guys found any of this information beneficial or useful, please do me a favor and give me a thumbs up. If you need any more information or specifications to this model or any of the other models that Cy Rusher has in their lineups, a link to their website will be located down below in the description as well as any other relevant discount codes that are going on at this time if you so choose to pick up one of these models. So until then guys, if you have any other comments or concerns, leave them down in the comment box. I'll try to answer them uh, as fast as I can. And uh, thank you for tuning in to another tech review on Vegas D-Tech. I'll catch you guys in the next review. You guys be well. Take it easy.